We're joined by New Mexico State head coach Marvin Menzies. Coach, can you just start out by telling us about your team and your expectations for the season? Of course I can, Hope. Thanks so much. Um, first of all, it's such a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, again, this, uh, this season is, is uh, like a lot of the coaches, I'm sure, who have, who have uh, had a chance to come up here before myself, have alluded to their optimism and the new players and uh, the guys that they had maybe sitting out or transferring in. I think it's going to be an exciting season for the WAC. I'm, I'm really optimistic that we'll uh, have some competitive games when we get to conference, but I'm really curious to see how we're going to play in the non-conference as a, as a conference. So I think my particular team, um, to be specific, is, is, is a lot of gray areas, a lot of areas of, of uh, I think it's going to take five or six games for me to be able to give you some, some real honest uh, assessment of of where we're going and where we're headed. It's just, there's just way too many new faces uh, to, to, you know, to let you know for sure. But, but we've got a great core returning, at least, in, uh, in uh, Wilkins and Pascal Siakam, and as well as Ian Baker and uh, a few other guys that had a chance to log some minutes. So uh, those guys out obviously are, are, are going to be the ones that have to take what they've learned and experience in the winning and, and pass that along to the young guys and, and grow it with no seniors on this year's roster and only probably two juniors that'll actually play. Uh, the future's bright when you get picked to win the conference. I don't know how accurate that's going to be, obviously, until I get a chance to see the other teams. But um, if, if that does end up being the uh, come to fruition, then things should be really good because we, we're, we're so young going forward as well. What do you think about the 30-second shot clock? Do you think it's going to lead to higher scoring or more exciting games? Well, you know, if we can get a 30-second 30 30 clock to, to, um, to, to work at every single arena, <laughs> I think that it'll, it'll be efficient. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, you know, obviously it's, a, it's, a, it's a, one of those things where you don't really know until you get a chance to go through it. Um, you know, I watch our women's teams play, and um, I, I, I like the I like the pace. You know, I like the way that the the uh, the games are played. I think there are, there was a little more emphasis to score earlier in the shot clocks as a result of not wanting to go to to last second. You know, plays with with four or five six seconds left on the shot clock. So I think it'll force the pace. Um, it doesn't seem like a lot of time, but but it's a significant difference, I believe. What about any other changes? Do um, you think any of those will have a substantial impact? Too, too early to tell. Uh, there's a couple that I can think about that might impact uh, uh, a game or two. I think the, the, the general um, emphasis of the uh, officiating committee now is to uh, cut down on the physicality and open the game up and make it a little, you know, spread it a little bit more uh, from a scoring perspective. I think they're going to call things a lot tighter earlier in the year to kind of set the tone and get guys to, to guard and defend a certain way. Um, so whether that forces some coaches to go to a zone or whether it forces coaches just to play differently on how they guard in the man, uh, either way, I think you're going to see a lot of teams that are going to get marquee players with two fouls quick in, in early games in the year, and those guys will be sitting for the first half, and then now get, the game has changed. So I think that's, that's going to be um, you know, just the way that they're calling the game uh, will be will be a little bit different in terms of the physicality, and then and then the coach is not being able to call timeouts during a live ball. Uh, my personal favorite. Um, I think that you've got to have great communication between your players and the coach, and have some type of system, you know, in place now that was something else we didn't have to coach before. But it's 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 all for the betterment of the game. You know, obviously the, those guys uh, study their, their their craft of officiating and and have a much better feel on that than I do. But my input would be basically that I think that that might be something else that could affect the game where a coach tries to get a, a call in and his players didn't hear him or it's on the other side of the court and now the the clock's expired or the shot clock's expired or they or they you know now they only have one second left where they would have had four. That that that's going to play a role in the game as well. I would imagine. Last year, you won your fourth straight WAC tournament title, fifth of the last. I'm sorry, I can hear you. Say that one more time. Uh, the four, four. I think oh, that comes after three. I got you. Uh, yeah, your fourth straight WAC tournament title, fifth in the last six seasons. Right. Uh, can you talk about the expectations that come along with that level of success? Well, you put them on yourself first. Obviously, we put it on our players, our staff. Um, um, 
you know, even administratively. Uh, you know, I have high demands of, of, of everybody that's affiliated with our program because, because you do have those expectations. You know, you want those expectations. Um, so I think that the, the, the challenging thing is every year with new young men, you know, you, who knows what curveballs are going to be thrown at you from, you know, who, what, what guys are going to be productive um, that are freshmen and sophomores. So it's those pieces, the basketball pieces, that, that always make it challenging. But uh, we built up a great program, and it's not myself. It's been a, been a collaboration of, of, of really, really talented staff members, and Paul Weir and, and Keith Brown and Eric Sanders have been fantastic. My support guys, from my video guys to my managers. I mean, we have the greatest managers in the conference, bar none. I haven't even seen the other managers, and I can tell you we got the best managers. We just got guys that are totally committed to the cause, and, and we operate at a, at a high level, and, and we, we have high expectations and high level of, of, of accountability. So, um, so we're excited about, about continuing that. Uh, whether that brings a championship every year, who knows, you know. Um, that's always the goal, right? But, but I think it's your, your overall tenure and, and, and your legacy that you leave behind, and, and I think that that's the most important thing is that as we approach E-season. Um, you've had success in the past with a number of international players and uh, especially tapping into Canada, um, and on this squad you have a number of those uh, individuals as well. Can you just talk about recruiting in internationally and, and just kind of going anywhere to find a, a prospect? Well, you know, when I first started to, to coach, uh, not, not coach, but recruit internationally, uh, you know, you always want to think about your future as a coach. And I knew that I could travel a lot easier with my wife in retirement had I had frequent flyer miles. So what I did was decide to go as far as possible to uh, stack up my frequent flyer miles on the university's dime and uh, have a great, uh, great retirement. So <laughs> next question. No, I'm just kidding, obviously. Um, you know, we've got, we've got a lot of relationships that I've had. I've been coaching a long time. I, I look really young, but I've been coaching over 30 years. So um, a lot of guys overseas that I've known through the junior college ranks. And even as a high school coach, I met a, met a bunch of guys. A bunch of my former players are, are involved with some of the um, – uh, organizations, you know, in, in, in uh, South Africa and in uh, Western, Western parts of Africa, and Dakar, Senegal, um, Europe, a lot of different countries in Europe that we have um, or re different regions out there that, that we have relationships with. So you got to go where you can get kids. It doesn't matter where, you know, where that is. I'm not going to not recruit somebody because they're a little bit further away. Uh, and there's less, there's less people recruiting them, let's be honest, you know, um, you know, Coach Cal and, and, and uh, you know, Roy Williams and whoever else is, you know, they, they don't make a lot of trips overseas. So they may send their assistants. But um, so that gives, you, that gives you another opportunity to steal, steal a kid. Like Pascal. Pascal, no one, I mean, we were the, we were the first, first ones to see him. And, and, uh, and here he is, you know, conference player of the year a couple of years later. So obviously the formula is working for us uh, right now, the, the paradigm that we have in place. So. You just hit on it a little bit. Can you talk about um, Pascal getting selected as preseason player of the year as a sophomore? I certainly can't hope. Uh, I would say whenever you give these individual, individual accolades, you know, it's always scary. You know, it's a little scary because, you know, okay, how are they going to handle that? Pascal's a great human being, great person, great character. He'll be fine. Um, I can't always say that our preseason guy in years past and – not just in New Mexico State, but other places I've been, how, how that's kind of affected things. Uh, but for, for the most part, I think the character of the kid will determine how he handles the, the, um, the recognition. And Pascal's a very, very humble kid with a, a great uh, uh, big picture focus. So he'll, he'll do a great job. Um, but he's also earned, I think, that right you know, with his, with his success and, uh, and, and his contributions to, to our winning, not just his numbers. Because he does it's not like he put up – Martez had, what, averaged, what, 17 points or something like that, and I think Pascal was probably around 12 or, or something. So it's not, it's not just about the scoring, you know. It's, a, it's a, being a complete player and, player and being able to do the things that help your team win, and that's what he, that's what he does. Coach, you also have another first-team preseason All-WAC player in – and Ian Baker, and somebody that really came to the forefront last year. Yeah, Ian, I always knew Ian was very talented. Uh, he was just a, a guy that needed to get opportunity. You know, he signed with a Big E school out of high school. 
had an injury. We stayed in there and hung in there with him, got him on the campus, and uh, finally, finally had a chance to have a full season last season. He had only played a, uh, a half of a season the season before. So, so it was good for other people to see how good he was. I knew how good he was. Um, that's why we stayed on him when he was, when he was injured. Um, and, you know, between those two guys, Pascal and, and, and Ian, uh, I think you got to kind of throw Jonathan Wilkins into the mix. I think Jonathan is, is a guy, because of the injuries last year, had a chance to play significant minutes. And even when Chilezi Napawe, who we call Chile, came back, um, uh, you know, Jonathan still had a chance to contribute. So, so those three guys are kind of your core. And then you have some guys when you start talking about, and I know you asked about Ian, but, you know, you, you can't talk about one without kind of seeing how he connects to the next. And you look at Tamvir Bular and Jalen Penny and, and Matthew Taylor and, you know, and, and the list goes on, you know, of guys that had a chance to get a sniff at some, at some good minutes last year. You know, that, 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 that's, that's going to be significant, I think, for us going forward. So we ta I talked about it a lot last year when those guys were playing uh, in the early games in the year, especially when we had uh, the injuries. And so now it's time for them to step up and uh, see, make, make me, uh, make me a accurate, uh, you know, whatever that word is, the people that – with the crystal ball people, what do they call? Prognosticator. Prognosticator, yeah. I was going to say something else that might, have, might not have come out well, so let's go with your word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Coach. That's it? I was just getting warmed up. Okay. Well, I love you guys. Take care.